Hello and welcome to today's lesson on alternators and dynamos, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at describing the difference between alternators and dynamos. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what the generator effect is, understand how potential is induced in a conductor, describe how the size of the induced potential can change in a generator, and then explain the difference between a generator and a dynamo. So if we've been if successful in today's lesson, we'll have understood the following parts of the GCSE separate science only content, which is induced potential and the use of the generator effect. Now there are two types of device which can carry out electromagnetic induction. And they, they are the generator, which is a device used to generate alternating current. Now this generator works as there's a coil which is rotated in a magnetic field. The current is then induced in this rotating coil because slip rings are connected to the coil which allows them to make continuous contact between a circuit and the slip rings allowing current to flow in an external circuit. Now it's important to note that a generator has a very similar design to a motor. It contains a permanent magnet and it contains a conductor, a coil which is rotating. Now the generator uses the principle of induction to produce potential difference. Now the generator rotates in a full circle. Now this will generate a current which will be will reduce to change direction every half a rotation as the permanent magnet polarization and the conductor alignment switches every half a rotation. So this fundamentally means that a generator produces alternating current. Now the generator contains slip ring brushes. Now this ensures a continuous contact between the circuit and the generator. Now this means there's always a complete circuit and current will always flow. Now the slip ring brushes tend to be made from graphite. Why graphite? Well it's a conductor conductor and it's slippery so it allows the generator to rotate as fast as possible while still maintaining that, that connection to the circuit. Now the generator has no slip ring commutator. Okay, now as a result another name for the generator is an alternator. Now this tends to be its name in America. Now we call it an alternator because it produces alternating current like mentioned before. Now the slip ring brushes are so important as they keep a continuous connection with the coil and, let, and lets the current flow out of the the coil through the brushes and into the circuit. Now like we mentioned before in an alternator the current changes direction every half a turn. Now the induced potential difference in an alternator is a maximum when the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field while the induced potential in an alternator is zero when the plane is the, the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. So let's just summarize what we know about alternators. Alternators induce potential difference by electro magnetic induction. Alternators work as a coil is made to rotate in a magnetic field of a permanent magnet. Now this induces a current in the coil when the coil is part of a complete circuit. Now the induced potential difference in an alternator is a maximum when the plane of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines. The induced potential difference in an alternator is zero when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines. Now the current changes direction every half a turn in an alternator. So this gives an output of an alternating current. Now alternating alternators contain slip ring brushes to maintain a constant connection in the circuit so current always flows. Now the second type of device which can carry out induction is a dynamo. Now a dynamo is a device used to generate direct current. Now dynamos, like the generator, use the induction effect to induce potential difference. Now dynamos do contain split ring commutators in instead of the slip ring brushes that a alternator will have. Now like in a motor, the split ring commutator swaps the connection to the circuit every half a, half a rotation. So this ensures that the current flows in the same direction throughout, so it ensures that the dynamo produces direct current. So the induced potential a difference in a dynamo varies from zero to maximum in each cycle but never goes negative because it never goes in the opposite direction. So let's just clarify what we know about dynamos. Dynamos induce potential difference by electromagnetic induction. Now dynamos work as a permanent magnet is made to rotate around a coil and this induces a current in the coil when the coil is part of a complete circuit. Now the current stays in the same direction in a dynamo which gives an output of direct current. Now 
dynamos achieve DC by having a split ring commutator making the ends of the coil swap contacts with the circuit every half a rotation. So let's just compare and contrast the two devices. In a generator or alternator, you've got alternating current. In a dynamo, you've got direct current. In a generator or alternator, you use a, split, a slip ring brush. In a dynamo, you use a split ring commutator. So in a generator, the connections remain unswapped, yet in a dynamo, they swap connect, they swap every half a rotation. But both the generator and the dynamo induce potential difference via the generator effect. So let's look at the potential difference time graph due to a generator or an alternator. So remember, we've got an alternating current here. Now the amplitude of the graph indicates the value of maximum potential difference induced, and the number of waves per second indicates the frequency of the alternating potential difference. Now changing the frequency of spin in your in your alternator affects the frequency of the potential difference output, whilst the change in the frequency of the spin, the strength of the permanent magnet, and the length of the conductor in the field affects the amplitude of the output, the maximum potential difference induced. So you can see your values of maximum potential difference here in your potential difference time graph. Now remember, this occurs when the plane of the coil is parallel to the direction of the magnetic field, whilst in this particular idea we've got the minimum potential differences. Now this occurs when the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. Now in contrast, here is the potential difference time graph due to a dynamo. Now the dynamo produces direct current. Now changing the frequency of the spin in your dynamo, the strength of the permanent magnet and the length of the conductor in the field affects the amplitude of the output. It affects the maximum potential difference induced. Now remember, our slip ring brushes prevent the potential difference from being alternated. So this means that in the potential difference time graph for a dynamo, there's no negative values for the dynamo as the current and PD are in one direction only. Now the split ringed commutator prevents any values from being a negative. Now the induced potential difference reaches a maximum twice a cycle. Now this is like the alternator, but for an alternator, there's what there's a maximum in a is a positive and a maximum as a negative. But for a dynamo, both the maximums in that cycle are actually actually positives. So induction can be carried out by both alternators and dynamos. Now generators or alternators produce alternating current by using slip ring brushes to maintain a constant connection with an external circuit. Dynamos produce direct current by using split ring commutators to swap the connections with an external circuit every half a rotation. Now it's important to note that both of these particular ideas can use induction to produce their potential difference which turns into a current when it's part of a complete circuit. So let's summarize what we've learnt in today's lesson. If an electrical conductor moves relative to a magnetic field or there's a change in magnetic field around a conductor, a potential difference is induced across the ends of a conductor. If the conductor is part of a complete circuit, a current is induced in this conductor. This is called the generator effect. An induced current generates a magnetic field that will oppose the original change, either the movement of the conductor or the change in the magnetic field. You should be able to recall the factors that affect the size of the potential difference and induced induced current and also indicate what factors affect the direction of induced potential difference and induced current. And you should be able to apply the principles of the generator effect in two examples. You should be able to understand how it's used in an alternator to generate AC and in a dynamo to generate DC and be able to explain how the generator effect is used in an alternator to generate AC and DC in a, to, generate, a, to be generated in a dynamo and draw and interpret graphs of potential difference in, generated in a coil against time. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we can describe what the generator effect is, understand how potential is induced in a conductor, and describe how the size of the induced potential can change in a generator, and most importantly, explain the difference between a generator and a dynamo. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the alternator and the dynamo, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE Separate Science Physics. Thank you very much for listening, and have a lovely day.